Larry Cano. I'm Larry Con I never met Larry Cano. He was not my friend. I knew about Larry Cano. Larry Cano probably did not know about me. Larry Cano grew up in East LA like I did. And his dad and my dad were compadres, which means they were friends. <clears throat> they socialized, did community service and so forth. Larry Cano was about seven years older than me, graduated from USC about three years before me because he went to service twice. He went during World War II as a pilot and went through world, the Korean world as well. <clears throat> Larry Cano grew up in East LA, <coughs> excuse me, briefly went to UCLA, went in the service, came back with a GI Bill, and then he allowed him to uh, get his business degree from the University of Southern California, which was his dream school. And he started a restaurant and it didn't succeed. Finally, his family told him, look, why don't you serve Mexican food? You know Mexican food, you don't know American food as well? <coughs> Excuse me. And so he did that. It was a big success in the Hollywood area. It grew and grew. Pretty soon, the clientele included people like uh, Anthony Quinn, Lana Turner, Gregory Peck, John Wayne. It was who's who's who of the movie industry. They loved the tacos. They didn't know much about Mexican food at that period of time. In fact, they used to pronounce tacos tacos, <laughs> tacos. <laughs> so it grew to a, a size of 22 restaurants. And a big corporation came in, bought them out, gave them, a, gave them a truck full of money, and made him the president for the next 10 years. The reason for that is because they were afraid of his competition. And after 10 years, he started all over again. He went in and created Tequila Woolies in Manhattan Beach near Xerox, where I worked. My children were about early teens there. And at that stage of, 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 of their life, teenagers don't like to hang out with the parents. They got their own peers. But every time I mentioned Tequila Willies, they were all smiles. 50 miles round trip, and it was a gorgeous place with great food. And then later he created um, El Torito Grill, which was a fabulous place in South Orange County. It was a huge two-story building with a bar up at the top and a meeting room, and down on the bottom, the right-hand side were boots and the middle tables. It was a gorgeous place. And at that period of time, there was a food critic named Almer Dill. He had a show, a radio show, and he'd uh, really strict and demanding. And people who owned restaurants were in fear he'd come and check out theirs because it was too difficult, so difficult to please him. Well, he had heard about the, uh, Alterator Grill, and he went to check it out. Came back on his show. The following week, he evaluated it. And he didn't even mention food. All Almer Dill said was, once you walk into a place, you know you're somewhere special. What the status of those places are, presently, I don't know. Sometimes people take over and try to make it better when they have a masterpiece and they screw it up. Let me give you one example. There's an alterator on the corner of Dalla View and, and Catella. Gorgeous looking place on the outside. And it was fantastic on the inside a while back. Well, a few weeks ago, my daughter, along with my youngest grandson, his fiance, Heather, took me to lunch. I walked inside. They had good at the place and made it an American style restaurant with outside Mexican building. What <laughs> It just didn't look right. And so, like I said, some people take over and make a worse, a, a, a good thing bad. When, um, when Larry Cano um, increased the uh, number of restaurants to 22, corporate came in, bought him out, gave him this contract, and he grew it to 190 restaurants throughout Southwest. And he income was over $400 million a year. And today, there's only 57 restaurants and only one outside the state of California. Bad management, but under Larry Connor's tutelage direction, and this number of people who were successful in creating their own restaurants or their own positions in the industry. One of them became the CEO of Starbucks. <laughs> Larry Cano. When he, he was, uh, when I graduated from USC, 
and my dad and Larry Carroll's dad were close, social functions and so forth. My dad would say, Sonny, this is my nickname, Larry opened a restaurant. I said, great dad, I don't know, it was a taco stand or whatever. Not to belittle taco stands because there's many millionaires out there who have half a dozen taco stands. They're doing just fine. Then he'd say again, Sonny, uh, Larry Khan opened another restaurant. And then one day, my dad says, Larry Khan is gonna treat his dad on his birthday. Well, what's he gonna do, dad? He said, well, he's, gonna, he's gonna send three white limos to East LA to pick up his compadres. Now, East LA is the lower working class community, especially when I was growing up. And you don't see limousines in the area very often, especially three of them. So here they come. Probably people wondered, is it the mayor or is it the governor or is it Al Capone? <laughs> Picked up all the compadres and went and had a great, great time. Larry Cano, when he was um, in the service, he achieved the rank of captain, went on two missions, World War II and Korean War. Larry Cano seemed like everything he touched turned into gold. From the description I've heard of him, because I never met him, I planned to, one day I read about him, he had retired. I said, I think I'll drop a note off and tell him who I am and how our dads were friends. I postponed it too long. And before I knew it, he had passed away. But Larry Connell was successful in creating restaurants, serving his country in two world wars, uh, ended up in service as a captain. And he showed people, many people, how to create restaurants successfully. Larry Connell. A very special man, Mr. Toastmaster.